morning everyone welcome back to riding with Ree with me and ted today i'm going to take you through how to tack up when your tech is slightly trickier let me explain what that means so i've had quite a few questions lately around ted's tack and the bits and pieces that are part of it and it occurred to me that whilst there are a lot of videos on youtube about how to tack up a horse english style there aren't that many videos that cover what happens when you know how to tack up but then suddenly you get an interesting or confusing element and you don't know quite what to do with it so i'm going to take you through ted's tack and then we're going to tack up together so let me show you the elements that we're going to go through today so this is ted's bridle and firstly on the bridle we have a grackle nose band this is something you guys have been asking me about we also have rubber bit guards and we have a martingale and a five point breastplate. That's Ted's bridle. On his saddle, we have the usual numner. We also have a half pad and I'm gonna talk you through how to wear that. If you enjoyed today's video, do give it a thumbs up. Leave me any questions or comments down below and do subscribe if you haven't already done so. Ted is my first horse share, so I'm sharing my tips, tricks and fails as I go along. Do join our little virtual yard here on YouTube. This is how you are gonna put your martingale together with your tack. So this piece at the top here is the top of your martingale, okay? This piece is gonna go against his skin, where the sheep skin is, that's against his skin. And then this long piece with a loop at the end is the bottom, and that's how you're gonna to know top to bottom. So the long piece with the ring is your bottom, and this piece with the two rings is your top, okay? That top is gonna to sit, when you um, are storing it, it's gonna sit with your brow band and the top of your reins, like this, okay? Let's talk about how to put one together. So, pop this over on that hand, you're gonna undo your reins, this is a running martingale. So it has these two front pieces of the rings, okay? One of these is gonna go through each of your reins. Make sure that your reins stay straight so they don't get twisted. If they are twisted, we can fix that in a moment. And then let's do up the reins. I'm just gonna pop the martingale up on this hook so that we can check. Now, as I said, this sheepskin piece is going against his skin. So you want the sheepskin piece facing away from front of your bridle okay let's just check if these reins are straight this is actually easier to do on a horse so i always do a double check when i get on as well when you're storing a martingale as i said you want the top of the martingale here with the top of your reins and your brow band that's going to sit on the hook together this long piece at the bottom often trails on the ground and we don't want that it's going to damage the tack so what you're going to do is get your throat latch pull that through the end of your martingale and then just do it up so that when it's on the when it's on the hook in your tack room it's all going to stay together okay so let's undo that again reins and the top of the martingale come out together let's undo the throat latch and undo the martingale okay let's tack up together so the first thing i'm going to do is pop the top of my bridle on my elbow and separate out the top of my martingale and the top of my reins. I'm gonna take this head collar off. We always leave a little bit on his neck in case he walks away while you're doing this. I'm gonna slip the top of the head collar over my other arm and then the top of your martingale and the top of your bridle, uh, the top of your reins, sorry, is gonna slip over his head and sit on his neck. And then I can take off this piece of the head collar. So the rubber bit guards, what you're gonna do is take your bridle like you normally would. So in this hand, I'm gonna open it up and have it there in this hand together. And then I'm gonna open up my, my, my bit with my hand like I normally would. And I'm gonna separate the rubber bit guards with my hand so they sit on either side of the bit. And I'm gonna keep them separated whilst I put the bit in his mouth. And then we're gonna pull the brow band over the top of his head, just like normal. Sometimes these rubber bit guards, if you haven't been able to separate them properly, they'll end up in their mouth. You'll know because they'll start mouthing quite a bit. It's okay, that's fine, it's not gonna hurt them. All you need to do is pop your hand in there, be careful of their teeth and just pull it out again and then sit it right, okay? You want it sitting sideways, just on the inside of the bit there, all right? What these do are gonna protect your horse's mouth from the edges of the bit. Sometimes they can pinch a little bit, so that's what these rubber bit guards are doing. Let's move on to the grackle nose bands. Now grackle nose bands are to stop horses from crossing their jaw 
And what they do is the pressure, the pressure that applies there stops them from crossing their draw and um, the rider loses control when a horse does that. So they stop them from crossing their draw, but they've kind of become a little bit of a fashion statement. I would say for me anyway, the simple attack you can have on your horse, the better. I personally wouldn't put a grapple on my horse unless I thought that they needed it, but that is what they are. So this is a grapple nose band. How you're gonna fit this is this sheepskin piece is always gonna be central on his nose. And you want this to be high enough so that the rings here should sit on his cheekbone. If you put two fingers together, the top finger is where the top of your metal ring is going to sit. And this is coming inside your other leather piece and then done up at the back. With most nose bands, you want to be able to get one to two fingers inside your nose band, so not too tight. Make sure you pop it in your keepers. And then with the second piece of the nose band, we're slipping that inside the rubber bit guards and it's sitting in the little little groove just under his chin. Now you want this to be high enough so that it's not sitting on the fleshy part of his nose, which you'll feel, because that's gonna interfere with his breathing, okay? Now, if you have a horse that dips their head while you're doing the tack, which Ted does, and you have no hands, this is something that I do. Pop a little, little knee just underneath, gently, because this is sensitive, but it will just help pull them back up again. And then finally, the throat latch. You should be able to get a fist in there sideways, okay? So let's run through that again. We want one fist in the throat latch, two fingers in the top of the grackle, two fingers in the bottom of the grackle. I could actually probably go up another hole there. That's quite a lot of space and it will only be effective if it's a bit tighter. So I would tighten this up if I were actually riding today. And then you have your rubber bit guards, all right? That is your bridle. Your reins are sitting here on the neck and so is the top of your martingale. And that long piece, with the loop on the end, was just dangling down between his legs. Remember that numna and half pad we talked about earlier? Your numna's going on first. Hello. So you want to pop this a little bit higher than where it's ending up, gonna, where it's going to end up sitting. And then you're going to slip it back. And it should sit on the top of the withers. If you have these pieces on your numna, that should line up where the girth is going to go, just behind his shoulder. So that's a straight line down. You always pull it back rather than forward because that is the direction of the hair. And if we push it the other way, it's gonna make uncomfortable. If you imagine that with a half pad on top, with a saddle on top, half an hour's work with sweat, it's gonna be uncomfortable. So we always wanna push it down. And then the half pad, you'll see that half pads have a wider top and a smaller back. So this wider part is what's going up over his withers. And this piece is what's going on the back. You are such a cute boy, good lad. So same thing, I'm gonna sit those together. I'm just gonna remove that bridle and it sits there like that, okay? You want this piece out of the way because these, these are gonna to attach to our saddle, which I'll show you in a moment, good boy. So we've got our saddle here and we've got our girth. I'm approaching from the left. I always put my tack on from the left, same as when you get on. We're gonna gently pop the saddle down, making sure that all the flaps are in, in the right place and sit that on top of the numna. You might find that when you put the saddle on, the numna was squished slightly, so you might want to pull it up just a little bit to give him a little bit of room on his withers, just like that. And then we're going to lift up this flap and we're going to pop this around the girth strap, which is going to keep it in place while we ride. Normally, I wouldn't want him eating while I'm tacking up, but I'm not actually riding today, so I don't mind quite as much. Same with the half pad, popping that behind our first girth strap. Now, let's go on to the breastplate and the martingale. So your breastplate, this is a five point breastplate because there are five points of contact. So there's one here, there's one here, there's one here, and there's two of these on the other side, which is five. What this does is stop your saddle from slipping backwards. And then we're gonna put the girth on. So it's gonna go up through this little piece here. And you wanna use the two outside sides of the girth strap. I wouldn't do it up super tight when you first put it on. It's not very pleasant for the horse and you can do, uh, do it up more later. I'm just gonna show you something really quick. This is why we take our hay net away when we tack up, because we do not want him eating with his bridle on. I just said earlier that I'm not riding this morning, so it doesn't matter, but just to show you why. This is, it makes it dirty, it's not great. You just don't want them eating. Also, before you get on, you don't want them eating. We've attached our two straps from our half pad and our numna, and now we're gonna put the martingale on. So this long piece with the loop at the end, which is sitting between his two front legs at the moment, when you pass your girth through the bottom, through underneath him, 
you're going to bring this piece between his two legs and this loop here that's at the bottom of this um that we were martingale your girth is going to pass through it you want that martingale loop sitting centrally in the middle of the girth you don't want to move that when you've done up the girth because it's going to rub between his legs so make sure that it's sitting centrally just under his tummy and then you're going to do your girth up as normal so now that our martingale's on let's talk about our breastplate hello so you want to make sure that your reins are out of the way so pop those a little further up on his neck make sure that's sitting centrally and then we have our two points okay and these are going to attach to two different places on the saddle this top point here you'll have a d-ring at the top of your saddle just there and it's going to pass through the d-ring and back you want to make sure that it's tight enough that the saddle isn't going to slip back so perhaps a little tighter but not so tight that you're adding a bunch of pressure to here on his chest that is not the aim of it the aim is just to stop the saddle from moving back hi and then make sure that you tuck that in to your keeper it might have slipped around the back like this one has so make sure you put it forward and tuck that in so it's all tucked away this second one <clears throat> It's going to pass behind your girth. This is also why you don't want to do up your girth too tight. And then back round to the front. And the same thing, not too tight, but tight enough so that it's not going to move. So we've got one point up there, and then we've got one piece under our girth here. If I were riding, I would do this up a little tighter. Quite a common problem with martingales, these running martingales, is them getting twisted and the reins getting twisted up. So I've twisted up my reins here just to show you how to undo it. So undo your reins at the top and take them out of these loops and show you how to put them back on. So put that straight line from your bit with your buckles on the inside of your rein. You're going to keep that straight line all the way up so that this piece is facing upwards. Okay, you're going to pass it up through your running martingale loop like that. Same on the other side, through the loop. And then you're going to meet them at the top here so that these loops are facing upwards on your reins and they're sitting before your stoppers and your stopper should be at the same same place on both sides and that's just going to stop this ring from running all the way up to the bit what a running martingale is used for is stopping a horse from putting their head so high that they hit the rider or horses that rear teddy does do that he does rear so that is why you would use a running martingale there are other types of martingale there's a standing martingale there's an irish martingale but this is quite a common one that you'll find on horses, especially horses you might ride. So that is today's video on tacking up. I'm going to show you a quick scan of everything once more in detail so you can see. And I hope that you found this video useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. As I said, leave comments below and do subscribe. Ted and I would love to have you as part of our virtual little yard.